Hello class, we're about to start section 4.2, reducing fractions to simplest form. We have section A, prime numbers and factorization. A prime number is a natural number that has exactly two factors, one in itself. A couple examples. We have 2, 3, we have 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, and also 41. There are plenty, plenty more even after these numbers. But one thing I want you to notate in your notes is this here. 2 is the only even prime number, and 2 is also the lowest prime number. So make sure you notate that in your notes. 2 is the only even prime number, and 2 is also the lowest prime number. Okay, now, the next point. A composite number is a natural number that has more than two factors. For example, we can start here. We have 4, we have 6, we have 8, we have 9, we have what 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, and so on. Okay, now, one thing you need to notate about composite numbers is this here. 4 is the lowest composite number. And if you notice, a lot of your composite numbers are even, but you also have some that are odd, so there's a mixture. And one thing to note with prime numbers and composite numbers, there are no fractions, decimals, or negative numbers. Okay, now, it says here to find a prime factorization of a number, write it as a product of prime numbers. Now, note, when a number is not composite or prime, it is classified as neither. For example, we have these negative numbers. We could have like negative 1. We could have 0. We could have 1. We could have any decimal number, 1.1. .1. We could have fractions. We could have 3 halves and so on. These are examples of neither. Okay, now we scroll down here. It says find the prime factorization of each number. Now, we went over prime factorization already in 4.1, and I also recommended a video from uh, MAV010 uh, for you to watch. However, if you still need a recommendation for the video, please come and ask me in class. But we're going to go over the prime factorization of 21. We're going to use the prime factorization trees. Now, we can look here at 21. One prime number that's in 21 is 3. Now, we ask ourselves, since we took out 3 here 3 times, what gave us 21? It's 3 times 7. 3 is prime, and also 7 is prime. So the prime factorization of 21 is 3 times 7, which is your final answer. Now, we go here to number 2 with 55. Now, if we look here, we can use the number 5, and 5 times 11 we know gives us 55. 5 is prime, and also 11 is prime. So our prime factorization is 5 times 11. Now we come here to 28. Now we know in 28, 2 goes into 28, so we could do 2 times 14. We know 2 is prime. But we know 14 is not, so we have to take the prime factorization of 14. 2 goes into 14, so we have 2 times 7, which is 14. 2 is prime, and 7 is, and 7 is as well. So the prime factorization of 28 is 2 times 2 times 7. Now, we go down here to 72. Now with 72, we know 2 goes into 72. 2 times 36 will give us 72. 2 is prime, 36 is not. So we could break 36 down to 2 times 18. 2 is prime, 18 is not. 
So we bring 18 down to 2 times 9. 2 is prime, 9 is not. But 9 breaks down to 3 times 3. And we know both of these 3's are prime. So we have 3 3's, I mean 3 2's, and 2 3's. And that is our prime factorization. Now we go here to number 5. We have 240. Now we could say 2 times 120. 2 is prime, 120 is not. We could do 2 times 60. 2 is prime, 60 is not. 60 breaks down to 2 times 30. 2 is prime, 30 is not. We could break 30 down to 2 times 15. 2 is prime, 15 is not. And 15 can be broken down to 3 times 5. 3 is prime, and also 5 is prime. So the prime factorization of this number here, we have four twos, a three, and a five. And that is our prime factorization. Now we go to number six. Now we look here at 525. We know five can go into this value. So we would say five times 105. So five is prime, but 105 is not. We could take five again. 5 times 21 is 105. Now, 5 is prime, 21 is not. But we know the prime factorization of 21 is 3 times 7. So now, our prime factorization. Remember, we like to write this in order. So we will write the lowest number, which is 3. And then the next, which would be these two 5s. And then finally the 7. And that is the prime factorization. Now, there's one other uh, method I want to show you before we leave this page. This is called the uh, exponential notation of the prime factorization, which basically means you will write this uh, in exponential notation. So let's go back up here to these other problems. Now, these answers were correct, but whenever you have uh, more than one of the same number, you can write it as an exponent. Like this could have been written in this form. Or you could have wrote this as 2 to the second power times 7. Either one of these answers is correct. Now we go down here. We have what 3 2, so that would be 2 to the third power. Times we had 2 3s, this would be 3 to the second power. So that's also an acceptable answer. Then here, this would be 2 to the fourth power. I hope I have enough room. 2 to the 4th power times 3 times 5. And then finally, we will have this here. You have 3 times 5 to the 2nd power times 7. All of these are acceptable answers. And when you do it on my math lab, they may require you to write this in exponential notation. So just be aware of that. Now, we scroll down here to section B. It says writing fractions in simplest form. What do we mean by simplest form? Two fractions can look different but represent the same quantity. These are called equivalent fractions. The equivalent fraction that is written with the smallest possible numerator and denominator is called the simplest form. So basically what it's saying is is that your numerator and denominator can only have a common factor of one. Now now it says look for a common factor of the numerator and denominator. The common factors would divide to 1. n over n is equal to 1. So let's go through and do this. Okay, we have 30 and 42. Now we ask ourselves, what number can we think of that goes into 30 and 42? Let's start off easy. Let's start off with the number 2. So 2 goes into both of these. So what we would divide, we would divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15, and 42 divided by 2 is 21. Now we look at 15 and 21. We do have another number they have in common, which is 3. So we divide the numerator and denominator by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. Now the only thing that 5 and 7 has in common is 1. But let's go back and look here. Remember we had n over n equals 1, 2 over 2 is 1, and 3 over 3 is 1. And we know whenever we divide by 1, we're not changing the problem. 
So our final answer of five sevens is the simplest form of 30 over 42. Now we come here to number two. We have negative 12 over 20. Now the first thing we need to know is that our final answer is going to be negative. The second thing is we need to find a common factor of 12 and 20. And like I said, let's start small. We could try 2 over 2. Since both of them is even, we know we can divide them by 2. And it would be a negative. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 20 divided by 2 is 10. Now we notice that 6 and 10 also has 2 in common. So we could divide both of these by 2. And we know our answer is going to be negative. 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our final answer is a negative 3 fifths because 3 and 5 only has 1 in common. Now we scroll down here to number 3. Now we have 7 and 56. 7 and 56, they both have 7 in common. So we divide both by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1 and 56 divided by 7 is 8. And they have nothing else in common, so this is our final answer. Now we look here at number 4, 56 and 84. Now we know that both of them has 2 in common, so we could divide both by 2. 56 divided by 2 is 28, and 84 divided by 2 is 42. Now we know both of these have 2 in common, so we divide both of these by 2. 28 divided by 2 is 14. And 42 divided by 2 is 21. Now we know both of these have 7 in common. Divide both by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. So your final answer here is 2 thirds. Now we want to use method 2. It says use the prime factorizations of the numerator and denominator to locate common factors. Again, the common factors will divide to 1. Now watch this. Remember how we did the uh, prime factorization earlier. Now, when we were just doing method one, we need to talk about that. With method one, if you do not know what goes into both of these numbers evenly, you may have a hard time determining if you can simplify these numbers. That is one of the flaws for using method one. But if you, if you are confident and you know you can figure out what factors they have in common and divide all the way down to they only have one factor, then feel free to do this method. But if this method doesn't work for you, then maybe this next method will. Okay, now in method two, we need to take the prime factorization of 30 and also 42. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go off here to the side. I'm going to do 30 and 42. 30 we know is 2 and 15, 2 is prime, 15 is not, 15 breaks down to 3 times 5. So we know the prime factorization of 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. Now we do 42. We add 2 times 21, 2 is prime, 21 is not, and 21 breaks down to 3 times 7. So we have 2 times 3 times 7. So what we do here, we replace these values here with their prime factorizations. 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. And then 42 is 2 times 3 times 7. And now what we do is we simplify what they have out in common. They have one set of 2's in common. And they have one set of 3's in common. And our final answer is 5 over 7. Now we go here to the negative 12 over 20. So we go off to the side here. We do 12 and 20. 12 breaks down to 2 times 6. 2 is prime, 6 is not. 6 breaks down to 2 times 3. And then 20 breaks down to 2 times 10. And 10 breaks down to 2 times 5. So we will have two twos and a three here two twos and a five here. So we will write that. We bring over our negative. We add two twos and a three. And then we add two twos and a five. These two simplify out, two sets of two simplify out, and we're left with a negative three fifths. And that is our final answer.